they're supposed to change the PennDOT's mandate, and I attach that as part of that. If they touch a part of the sidewalk, they replaced like 90% of the sidewalk and left the broken pieces of, you know, I don't know if you saw it, Mike, or I, I uh, yeah, but you should see the, the sidewalk. And that's the lowest point of the neighborhood. And the street drains up here. And it's, it, all that water is just rushing down and it's hitting telephone poles and dispersing into the street. And that's not even when it happens in the rain in the, in the wintertime. Like, think about what's going to happen in the wintertime. It, it's, it's such a nightmare. And, you know, um, I got it all the way up to Mike Seibert, I guess it is. He's headed District 5. Um, and he was going to put that on the TIPS program. Is that what, I, I don't know all the terminology, but. Yeah, it's tip, TIP is one of the programs, yeah. Yeah, because, you, you, you know, you can't, it can't handle, you can't have streets without drainage. You know, it would be different if it was a flat level surface. These are, you're like this. You know, you got roads just, I mean, and the worst part about the whole situation is it's an area that's known for sinkholes. You know, Fairview, uh, I live right across the street from Fairview. Okay. That whole garage sunk back in, I think it was 1980. The house across the street sunk with sinkholes. And when I started, um, you know, trying to get involved with the sinkhole, because they were just throwing rocks in there and trying to address it there, it started bleeding towards my property. Like one sinkhole turned into two, then turned into five, and then and it's headed my way. And when PennDOT had their engineers out, they and PennDOT knows. I mean, they all say the same thing. I had the PennDOT, I was talking to the engineers that were doing the work on uh, last week. They all look at it like, you're going to have problems. But they're not mandated. I called Ben, who's the engineer for that project, but they, they put it like it's not in a budget. But drainage doesn't care whether it's in a budget or not. And they're going to spend, I don't know, $10, $11 million on that bridge. And they don't even take into consideration there's a river that's coming down every time it rains. Like, we, we didn't have that much rain today. I mean, it was a little, it was heavy at times. But y y you'll see the pictures tomorrow. I mean, I can't even tell you. I, for me to sit here and try and describe it, the pictures tell the story. You got people driving over water that's being pushed underneath their tires. That's a recipe for a big disaster down there. And then it's, co it's going around the corner onto Le Lehigh Street, too. So now it's just, it's an excellent plan for a sinkhole. If you're going to design a sinkhole, you would, that's how you would plan it. You know, all this uncontrolled water running into, into cracked sidewalk and curbing. So I, you know, I don't know what to say other than I'll do whatever I can to help work with the town and put pressure on them to do something. But it, it really, it's, it's going to be a problem for the town. Because I don't know if anybody's familiar with the sidewalk law in Pennsylvania. So, it, you know, it, the sidewalks are supposed to be maintained by the homeowner. But the township can only assess 15% of the assessed value of the homeowner. And some of those houses that are twins along that street right there, the assessed value is, I don't know, 89, 90,000. You know, the little twin homes along there. And you got 180 feet of curbing and sidewalk that it's probably more than the value of the home. And that's going to be on the township. You, you know, and uh, I just think that we have to really address that. I think everybody's like, it's a big problem. Nobody wants to touch it. But it, it's not going away. What street? What's, I'm sorry, what street? Bridge Street. You know where Bridge? Bridge? I'm Bridge. sorry. I thought I heard Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. It's br I know where I know where you're talking about. Oh yeah. So I thought I heard Pennsylvania. That's why I was confused. I'm sorry. Oh no no Pennsylvania you. law as far as sidewalks because okay. I've been looking into it's like you know who who deals with these sidewalks. No, I, under, I understand. Keep going. Yeah, I, and I, it, and the thing is, even with PennDOT, um, they're supposed to fix the ADA compliant sidewalk. They left this broken piece of about ten or twelve feet where it's broken up, and that's where all the water's going. Like I. It, and the thing is, I think uh, it's a matter of bringing it to the right people's attention, where they're like, like, I think they just got a new secretary of PennDOT. And I'm sure he's going to be dealing with Philadelphia and all that. But I promise you, he's going to start getting photos from me if he doesn't, if this doesn't get resolved. Because, you know, it's, and, it, and it, if you look at the growth for uh, Lehigh Valley Airport, we're going to be a big, you're not going to recognize the Lehigh Valley in five years. Well, you're aware that we tried to take action there. We tried to limit truck travel. I know. I, I hear you. We, we got nowhere. It's, you know, you're it's, just treading It's going to be a fight. It really is. I know it is. It is. But I'm just letting you know. I'm in fight. I'll give you the pictures and the documentation and all that. But I just wanted to make you aware of that because me as a citizen sending a bunch of emails out does one thing. I already contacted DEP for um, Pennsylvania. 
because they said if you disturb an acre of land, that's when you have to have that you know, stormwater drainage plan or whatever the case may be. Um, but you know, there's a federal level. I mean, I, I can't imagine there's not funding available to fix that. You know, some of these older neighborhoods that are 100, 200 years old, I, I get it. There's no street drains in there. But we are growing, and they're replacing a bridge. And PennDOT's bridge engineers are not talking to PennDOT's road engineers, and they don't realize that there's a big problem coming their way. So hopefully I'm going to just put pictures in front of you guys, and whatever you can do to point me in the right direction, I'll keep going. So I just wanted to, and that's why I was late. I was out there taking pictures, getting soaked, but... I think it'll be worth it when you see the pictures tomorrow because it really tells the story. But thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That's okay. all for that's all for courtesy of the floor. Okay, we're gonna move on to. Oh, there's somebody now. Oh. No, you have to come up, ma'am. Please, please state your name and address. Sorry. Rosine, four four zero eight North Church Street. I'm the president of the Environmental Advisory Council, and I just wanted to share a really good piece of news publicly not complain about anything. I haven't even shared this on social media yet, but back in March, I was searching around for sources for native plants for the township. And I came across a website called the Monarch Watch. And I filled out an application on this site to get plants for us as a township. And the mayor supported me. And I'd like to tell everybody that last week I received an email from them that we are getting $1,000 worth of milkweed plants, which is about 350 plants that we want to plant in some various places. Hopefully we can find a little spot around the township building here to create for, for our butterflies. And um, we'll be doing an event, maybe a couple of events, putting it on social media, try to get other people involved in helping us plant these milkweed plants and bring more butterflies to our town. Thank That's you. all I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you. If you could, if you could. Anthony Kopak, 3763 Dogwood Drive, Whitehall. Pictures. Uh, do you recognize that dump truck by chance? Yes, that's a Whitehall Township dump truck. And what do you think's going on there? I honestly, I do not know. I do well, not know. That, I don't think he's checking the oil. I, I where is this? I, I've. Well, I'm sitting on my porch. It's right in front of my house. Okay. And. Oh no. You, you get the gist of the picture? Well, I'm only looking at it I from mean, the side, I, but I'm just, I I'm, have a thought, but I, and I hope it's not the thought I have. Well, uh, well should, we, should we go test the streak to see? Well, yeah, I, uh, I don't know who you yeah, give this one to. but I, I'm, not a, I'm not a medical expert, I honestly. I'm not being smug when I say that. I, I honestly don't know. I, yeah, I can't tell. I can't tell. All right, I'll take a picture. I'll, 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 I'll make a copy of I, I, I cannot tell what, what's going I, on. I now. mean... If it did happen, it's very unfortunate. Well, if it was an emergency, I, uh, I'm not defending. I, I, that's, I, that's I, it's inappropriate. I don't oh, believe, absolutely. I don't believe you can tell that that's yeah, what you think I, it is. All right, well, I'll print out the, what was left in the street next week. <laughs> well, I can assure you that if that was the case and it was anything other than a medical emergency, that individual will be yeah, talked well, to. Was, where was that at? I understand. Front of my house. On Rosewood? On my front porch. We're on Rosewood? Dogwood. Dogwood. Well, maybe, maybe you can have a, a chat with uh, yes. the uh, public works uh, superintendent on conduct of employees while they're in the township neighborhood. Do you want to share that with me? Oh, sure. Well, I didn't know you didn't get to see it. I'm sorry. No, no. I mean, uh, I want to share no, it with uh, other I'm people. I'm just saying... We need to maybe advise employees on proper conduct while they're in the neighborhood. So you're, you're going to allow me to uh, no, 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 okay. No, it, it's not a big deal, but it should be addressed uh, for, you know, while the township, while you're out, out, out and about uh, repairing roads on proper <coughs> conduct in the neighborhood. I, I'd rather you gave it to me so I can 
educate the appropriate well, person. I believe just uh, a talk uh, with the superintendent and the crews would be sufficient. Okay, anyone else? Okay, moving on. Public hearing and voting on ordinances. Bill number 20 2023, the second hearing, so comment can be made. An ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the sale of Whitehall Township real property located on MacArthur Road in Whitehall Township, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, in accordance with section 3.20 and 3.24 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of conveyance of land from the township by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any comments from the board? Any comments from the floor? Please come up and state your name and address. Anthony Kopak, 3763 Dogwood Drive, Whitehall. Is there, is there a reason why the township didn't want to keep this property? Is it just not big enough? Since it's so close to the municipal complex, you know, you're using a barn for storage. I mean, is this lot not big enough where you maybe put a pole building up for storage maybe down, years down the road? You, you could use this lot for something? Well, there's still additional property that we will own okay. after this. A sliver of land. This is just a right. sliver of land. Right. Well, it, it just says, it doesn't tell you the size, right? Right. It's just a sliver and... What, what was it? 1.8 acres or yes. something, I believe. But it's not a square. It's a, yeah. Right. It's, it's an irregular it's, uh, shape. I think it was 1.8 right. if I remember. And it's going to be primarily, well, I don't want to get outside the box, but primarily for stormwater retainment. Well, they've, they've got to balance a site, so they need extra ground. So. Okay. I was just curious. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, I do have one comment that um, I think was mentioned Focusing the proceeds on that for capital improvements. And oh, yeah. And, I mean, it would be something storm sewer related, something that's lasting infrastructure that has a large, long, useful life. Yeah. It's not going to be for police cars or, or dumps or anything. Like this is something that yeah. we're giving up a something that's tangible that we should be seeing some benefit from it. Absolutely. It's, that's not something that's going to go away in 20 years. Any more comments from the floor? Can you please pull the board? Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Artia. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. Commissioner Warren. Aye. And President Marks. Yes. yes. Bill passes five ayes, zero nays. Okay. Bill, bill number 21 2023 was pulled tonight from the agenda. Moving on, Bill Number 22-2023, an ordinance, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the purchase of a new hydraulic detachable gooseneck trailer, 35-ton paver special, for the Public Works Department in accordance with Section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization and acquisitions in, a, in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Atia, any comments from the board? Any comments from the floor? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. And President Marks? Yes. Bill passes five ayes, zero nays. Number 23-2023, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the purchase of a 2023 Freightliner day cab tractor heavy hauler for the Public Works Department in accordance with Section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Questions from the board? Is this the second one for this year, or is this? This is just a tractor to pull the low boy around okay. to, to carry the milling machine safely. Very good. Any questions from the floor? 
Uh, Are we on the low boy or the tractor? Tractor. You got to come up. Sorry. The low boy's done. We're on the tractor. Well, you put the cart before the horse, is what you did. Pretty much. Anthony Kopak, 3763 Dogwood Drive, Whitehall. Uh, do you have a dump trailer for this tractor to pull around to get more efficient use out of the tractor that you're going to you know, spend all this money on? I, I, I don't, don't believe that this trailer can be pulled by a dump truck. This is... A, a, a dump trailer. No, this is exclusively a tractor. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, to pull need, this low boy. Should be able to pull it, uh, a dump trailer. Uh, I believe it could. We don't have a dump trailer. We have dump trucks. Right, well. It, it could if, if it needs to. I mean. I mean, you, you're spending all that money on, on this one specialized piece of equipment to haul your milling machine around. You know, I, it would be. Well, it's not just a milling machine. We could take any yeah, any piece of equipment, yeah, right? Put all that right. stuff on it. But then once it's done, then it's sitting there. Right. When you're you're milling out the road, you could load a dump trailer. You bring a blacktop to the job, you can use a dump trailer. Oh, sir, yeah. If we had a dump trailer, well, that would be perfect. Well, it's something you know you should think. Otherwise, you are buying a specialized equipment equipment just to basically move your milling machine around. You've got a track loader down down at the waste dump. But I don't know how many times you move that a year. I mean, is it more cost effective, you know, to, to call, you know, Sherman or right over here to move your, your milling machine eight, eight times a year? Well, you go to the road, mill it, you bring it back. I mean, well, I would I, like I, to see more use out of the equipment, that's all. Well, yeah, and I agree, but I think the logistics of having like a Sherman, first there's liability issues, okay? If Sherman... Well, I mean, I'm getting a funny look from the back, but what I'm getting at is if they would damage our equipment, there would be, you know, that could potentially be a problem. But what I'm getting at is we're, we move around a lot. Yeah. And to call Schuerman every time we've got to move this piece of machinery, I, I don't know how and you've feasible got people standing that is. Around for a couple hours, right. the truck gets there, and then the truck can't get there, and the paving schedule's behind, and the asphalt's ordered at the plant when, when, when our public works employees go to do a road, I mean, it's it's orchestrated. It's all, it's all hands on deck. It's all orchestrated to get the most out of man hours and keep the jobs going. There's right. there's a lot involved in it. There, there's really a ton involved. Well, that's why I brought up you need to look into a dump trailer now that you're buying this tractor. Because, let's face it, all the 10 tons in, in a single axle, I mean, the, the dump trailer is way more efficient now that you have the tractor. Right. See, what you have to understand, we defer to our professionals. We de defer to our bureau chiefs. We, you know, they ask for this equipment. We defer to their expertise. Right. And I hear you. I, I totally get where you're coming from. And maybe next year we'll have enough money to appropriate a dump well, trailer. I just, I just you know? want to throw it out there that, that it's more efficient than running a single axle back and forth. You go to remove snow in the wintertime, uh, you know, you can get up to more yards of snow right. on a dump trailer right. than you can get on a single axle right. dump truck. Makes sense. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? Ma'am? I'm sorry. Andrea Hoagland, 51 Kemet Avenue. Um, I went to one of your meetings, the, the Parks and Rec, so they explained to me after X amount of dollars, you must put in this request. So this is the thing, excess of $25,000. That doesn't tell us how much actually out of pocket we're going to come. Two, when they wrote this up to you, um, do they just say, ooh, we want a new truck, or do they have to actually give you a plan no, they, that, they, states, they do. And, and that states why we need this? They do. And if we're replacing old equipment, are we reselling the equipment, the yes, old we equipment? Are. are we keeping it? Does it go towards the cost of this? Um, and where can we see that on the website? There's a process for everything. It's in the ordinance, the cost of the equipment. Also in the budget. In it's the budget. In the budget. So it's on the website? Yeah, it's yes. Budget. In the budget. No, I'm saying, I've, okay, I'll look on the website and it'll tell me that the 23 uh, freight liner day cab cost this amount. This is what we're putting, you know, to that cost. The reason why is because this one's broke or we never had one to begin with. Because if we never had one to begin with, what was we using? Was that a better system? Was it a cheaper system? 
Are we just updating new vehicles to get new vehicles because that's no. what we do and every year? No. That's that's all I'm trying to say. And and budget is, time. So I can go on the website and it'll break down um, in the future anything like this, like why they requested it, how much it cost. You know, Joe, I'll tell you why it was requested. They come and they have to justify by what they want and why they need so it. So every bureau chief comes in front of the board every, of commissioners during okay. the budget season. So they have to justify yes. spending the money. Not yes. just that, wait a minute, not just that I have not a on a whim. Not just that I have a $20,000 budget, no. and if no. I don't spend my $20,000 budget, you're going to cut me next year down to fifteen. No, as I explained last week, we just got 45 years out of a Mac dump trailer, a, a okay. Mac dump truck. Okay. 45 years. That's unprecedented. We have a maintenance staff here with mechanics that maintain this I equipment. I have some beautiful new trucks that used to come through my area until after I talked to the mayor. Now I don't see any of the young men anymore. Um, but I'm, I'm just asking that, you know, there, there is a system in place, and it's not just there that um, we want new vehicles. No, no, that's and, no. And that I know everybody on the board, so everybody just says, yes, let's just do it. No, no okay. that's yeah. not the case. That's Never. It, so. Ms. And again, uh, where the, can I find out how much these trucks are, and stuff are involved? advertised? They, there's scheduled days where we go over the budget. Everything that you'd want to hear about right now, there we go over. Them. Oh, that's public. The budget. Yes, yes, yes they are. Again, this is not secret. Okay. We're out in the open, okay. and you're allowed to sit in there too. Okay, because I'm, I'm just saying this. The, 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 Two occasions with the, your two different staff members, I didn't feel. And, and, and again, I, I can't and talk for something that I don't there. know what we happened. I didn't feel that we were all out in the open because we kept using the words Whitehall resident only. Whitehall resident only. This board is not allowed to meet with so. a quorum. There are no secret meetings of this board. Okay. Well, I every time I come in here, they say they're not recording, the, the recording's not working. That's a workshop. So. That's a workshop. We don't record workshops. No, not that. I'm talking about even in this building. I, I've asked when the first meeting I came to, they said, well, the, 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 sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The mayor told me that at that time his secretary would be typing up the minutes. And I'm from, from what? You, you, everybody keeps saying you're not recording stuff. Again, that was, that was last year. Yeah, well, and then I stopped coming because I got a little scared. Be because of COVID <laughs> and because of the construction, we were ho holding our public meetings elsewhere, and there okay. were some technicalities. There were some problems. Okay. But everything was done above board and up and up. We had one meeting that couldn't be recorded because the recording system failed, but okay. we did the best that we could to record the minutes okay. and put it all out there. There's nothing secret okay. that happens here. Nothing. I can assure you. I can assure you. I won't let it happen. Well, let me ask you a quick question. That gentleman over there, when he brought up um, <coughs> the permit money yes, for the parks and rec, uh, uh, and they talked about permits for your pavilions and stuff, I asked them, well, where's the money go? And nobody knew. And then somebody says it's an organization. What's the name of the organization where the parks and, uh, the parks and permit money, like when, when the uh, – cement or any of these places. Well, it all depends out. on which park you're talking about. There's park associations. Some okay. are run by the township. Some are run by private organizations. Okay. I believe right now Egypt's, private. Egypt's the only private organization. And how so where does the permit money go? When somebody rents out a pavilion. It goes back into the their coffers into the in Egypt Park. Fund. But if not, it goes into the township recreation and fund. And the township operates the pavilion if they're renting it out. Right. And the township is cleaning it. The township gets the proceeds. If the park is taking responsibility for the pavilion, it goes to the park. Okay. And there are audits performed of those private organizations. Okay. Because, okay. I got you now. I got you now. There were some organizations that didn't have staff. They weren't able to rent the facilities. Right. Out. They dissolved, so West the township had to take. That, that group dissolved, and it became the senior center. Okay. So, yeah, it was a nice young lady you know, that was talking about she works empty, there. The township picks up the ball and tries to utilize it. Okay. My problem was with that. Everybody, they talked about seventy-five hundred dollars to upkeep this, but we can't have we don't we can't we don't have enough people to play it on the baseball field. So I'm like, okay, um, you upkeep in Wood Street Park, you're cutting the grass and all that, right? But you take down the stuff that people were utilizing in the park. Why do we keep paying maintenance and upkeep for, for different things in our community, but you don't do anything to really want us to use these places? Well, see, Wood like Street. Like with the permits, once you get done, a certain time of the month, none of us Whitehall people, you need to rent this out to outsiders to get money. 
if you know if that's what it's about not which treats a complicated situation because of PennDOT and because of the 22 improvements and there's still negotiations taking but place. But there was, was nothing wrong. The 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 park the, the park man said that we could play. I'm sorry, you're right. I went off. I went. I'm sorry. It's getting late. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me go. That's okay. But thank you for the information on about that. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Ginder, yes. Commissioner Warren, aye. Commissioner Atia, yes. President Marks, yes. Bill passes five ayes, zero nays. Public hearing and voting on resolutions. Resolution number 3265, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor and Whitehall Township to enter into a settlement agreement and general release regarding sections of corrugated metal pipe in the area known as Two Maryland Circle with Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority, Sewerman Excavating Incorporated, and SSM Group Incorporated. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the floor? Pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker, aye, and President Marks. Yes. Resolution passes five ayes, zero nays. Okay. okay. Under other motion to approve the appointment of Eric Englig to serve on the Whitehall Township Environmental Advisory Council, term expiring December 31st, 2025. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Warren. Do I have a second? I'll second. second. Hold the board. <clears throat> Any questions? Eric's been involved for a long time. Well, the... teacher, very active. Any other, other comments? <clears throat> Please pull the board. I did. Oh, okay, I only heard yes. I was before. looking at it. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker. I, Commissioner Atia. Yes. And President Marks. Yes. Motion passes five ayes, zero nay. Motion to approve the appointment of Carson Reichel to serve on the Whitehall Township Environmental Advisory Council as an alternate term expiring December 31st, 2025. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the floor? Please pull the board. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. And President Marks? Yes. Motion passes five ayes, zero nays. Motion to approve the reappointment of Dennis Ware to serve on the Whitehall Township Plumber Examination, Examination Board, term expiring April 30th, 2026. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. I have a second. I'll second. Any questions from the board? Dennis has been on the board for many, many years. Uh, you know, he's, he's done his job when we've needed him, so I just want to make that a small comment. Any, Any questions, questions from the floor? Please pull up. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Swanaker? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Tia? Yes. And President Marks? Yes. Motion and passes five ayes, zero nays. Motion. motion to approve the appointment of Erica Shaw to serve on the Whitehall Township Recreation Commission, community at large member, term expiring September 30th, 2024. Do I have a motion? So move. Do I have a second? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Oh, Mr. Ginder. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the floor? Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. Hey, Commissioner Warren. Yes. And President Marks. Yes. Motion passes five ayes, zero nays. Motion. Motion to approve the appointment of Patricia Matthews to serve on the Whitehall Township Recreation Commission Historical Society, term expiring September 30th, 2026. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Warren. Do I have a second? 
No, I'll second it. Mr. Kendra, any hey. questions from the board? Any questions from the floor? Okay. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. Commissioner, uh, yeah, President Marks. Yes. yes. Motion passes five ayes, zero nays. Motion. Motion to approve the release of escrow for completed and withdrawn projects per Deputy Mayor Myers memo, May 4th, 2023. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll make. Go ahead, Randy. Mr. Atia. Randy, for a second. Any questions from the board? Any, Any questions from the floor? Okay. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. President, President Marks. Yes. Motion, Motion passes five ayes, zero nays. Reports of the public officials, Board of Commissioners. I guess I will start with Mr. Atia. Uh, um, just one quick thing. I wanted to rec recognize the retirement of Mr. Tim Chrisman. Um, he's my neighbor as well, but he's, he was a basketball coach for me when I was a kid. But obviously the, the time he served Whitehall and, and the job he's done is, is should be commended. And, and you know I appreciate everything he's done for this township, I think talk to anybody in the township they probably say the same thing so I just wanted to recognize that we haven't done that yet so congrats to him on his retirement I've seen him a couple times doing stuff outside and asked him if he was staying busy and he told me his wife had plenty of jobs for him so seems like he's doing all right that's all I got Mr. Ginder At last month's meeting, there was uh, a gentleman here presented 9 Packer Avenue, uh, a small piece of land down the Fullerton area. Have we decided anything with that? I don't think we want to have that piece of land. He hasn't. I was just wondering what the boards feel. I was down and looked at it, and I don't know what we'd ever do with it. And it's the accessibility to, to get back in there, it's, it's like two alleys. And I, I just don't know what we'd ever do with it. Plus, if we take it, we're going to be cleaning it up. Well, then we're going to, yeah, and it seems to be everybody's junkyard was the comment made here, and we don't need that again. And we, we have been going after them. So if, if there's no interest in this, the proper thing probably would be to get back to that gentleman and not leave him hanging. I'd be glad to do that. Um, if, if this is the feelings of the board, I, you know, I'm just brought, bringing this up that we put it behind us one way or the other or go forward. What are the feelings, Randy? I looked at it as well. It's kind you of just, just an it. odd spot. So we just decline. Decline and thank you. That one. Where are we at with the sale of the old police building? Have we given any thought to where we're heading? Yeah, um, we have to get the deed description and the bid packet put together. Um, right now our purchasing is very busy on all of the things with the summer months coming. So we're hoping like when time allows probably late July or August to get that bid document assembled so that we can put it on the street. Uh, uh, Mayor, anything on Riverside? Are there upcoming meetings that we didn't hear about online or anything? I, I don't think I looked today. I didn't see a meeting scheduled. At I've time. been watching. I haven't seen it either. So I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Uh, anybody wants to call bingo at the senior center? I have a sign up paper up here the fourth Sunday of every month. Anybody still, wishes to call the papers here at the end of the meeting? I think they still need somebody for this month. Huh? I think they still need somebody. They still for need this somebody month. for June, yeah, this month. So anybody's interested, here's the sign and page. It's a great time. It's fun. Really? No, I'm serious. It is. I am too. It is, yeah. I enjoyed my time doing it. Uh, Make a mistake and they hit you. 
<laughs> uh, Frank, Mechanicsville, anything? Yes, we, uh, I had a conversation, a long conversation with Brian Boer today, and he's going to run some interference with us out in Harrisburg with the right-of-way department because it's getting a little ridiculous. Um, we already went, went back 60-some years in the title. Uh, Kevin Fogarty did all, did all that work. Um, and with the identification agreements that we passed, and Joe had to read all those long numbers, um, uh, he's taking the right-of-way department, and everything, has, everything with right-of-way has to happen out at central office in Harrisburg because they strive for consistency statewide. So he's going to shepherd that out there to make sure they're all everything's okay with that. Cycle five revisions to the plan. They wanted a couple different things. Uh, lastly, uh, they want us to move those lines over a little bit to to the south, and they wanted us to check to make sure that the straight through lane, actually it's a straight through left lane combined. They want to make certain that that lines up with the other side onto uh, Glenside Drive because there's a, they'll, they'll allow a little bit of a departure. Uh, if it's not straight, dead straight across. So they want us to look at that. So that's where we are right now. Um, there's a resolution you'll see next month <clears throat> that PennDOT wants us to, want you to pass that will uh, allow the mayor to transfer the property from township. Get everything else, now they want that as well before they sign off on the permit. And I talked to Brian about, now why are you doing this? It's like, you know, water torture. And he explained that in the past, and the township has done this in the past, where we would have the property, we would complete the work, and then, then we would turn the property over to PennDOT. So they didn't have any kind of liability during the construction. Well, that has all changed. Now they want all the property ahead of time transferred because I guess what happened in the past, things would slip through the cracks and somebody would forget to record that deed. So now they want that up front. So we're... we're we're, they have all the information, but they need the resolution that'll be that'll be added to the uh, July agenda. So that's where we're at. It's it's very close. I mean, we're confident, but it's stuff that they keep drawing back to. It's like, why didn't you tell us this two months ago? So uh, it's going through like five or six different reviewers, and stuff that was was clear in cycle two is now showing up in cycle five. So I had a long conversation with Brian today. He's waived a couple things for us to save some money. Um, but um, I feel pretty confident that we're finally going to get the traction we need with Brian's help. So. Can I add? Yeah, sure. Um, the two-foot right-of-way mm -hmm. on the McDonald's side. Um, gaining, we're, we're shifting the lanes on the south side to gain two feet. To Runner, they call it a runaround area. Runaround yep, area, that's potentially okay. for cars that are using Mechanicsville Road to turn into McDonald's mm -hmm. would probably hug the center line and that a car could get around. And right. I still think just two feet, you know, if you look there at the current design, two feet's not going to give enough room. And I still think that's giving us a runaround. I want those guys and gals to come in. Why that two feet? When we're ha we have a, another private land over owner moving his so curbing back, brand new curbing back, 18 inches because we're telling him to, and there's two feet that could probably benefit this project. And I don't care if it's cost. If it's going to help be safe, we should do it. If we're making somebody else do it, we should do it. With moving that curb line, uh, we're probably going to have to move all the mast arms as well because there's a minimum distance from the face of curb to the mast arm. That's one of the problems. Um, move that. Uh, I don't know what it's going to add time-wise to the project. I mean, we've gone 15 years. I know I, that, that could be a real problem, too. I mean, I could look at it just well, to see. You know, looking at the geometry, see yeah. what would be involved. I, I'd be happy to do that. Um, you refer to making somebody move curb. Okay, I know the project you're talking about. All right. So you know, all right, there was a utility pole that needed to be moved. And our friends at we get away from the road, they moved it toward the road, all right? So that was the first problem. It then cascaded where the developer took it on himself to put the curb and sidewalk in without inspection and without the stakeout. 
and it's in the wrong spot. It actually narrowed the cartway. So we had a meeting up there. I said, listen, well, we want you to sell the product. Let's get in, secure that stuff, and when PPL gets around to putting the pole where it's supposed to go, then you can finish it with the curb and sidewalk. We didn't force him to do anything. No, I, if he I'm had sorry. called us, we would have, don't do anything. The pole's in the wrong spot. Was it on the plan that way? Yeah, it's on the plan. It was approved the way it was supposed to be. He well, did something true. different but anyway, I, I guess disregarded the stakeout. But I know you probably heard one side of the story. I needed you to hear the other yeah. side. Well, I heard it wasn't on the plan. So. Well, it's on the plan. It's, that's where it's, I mean, that's the plan that was anyway, approved. Still, if it's going to benefit... No, I understand, but egress, again, egress, I, yeah, I have to look at the cost benefit too. It's like, well, I'll, I'll talk, I'll look at the the geometry, and I'll let you know. I understood. All right, then. Sorry, Phil. And, no, it's all right. Do you mind if I interject here? Absolutely. Go right ahead. <laughs> all right, and, and it's just because we're talking about that location right now. When you're coming out of the McDonald's, the big uh, tree uh, there. Uh, yeah. Okay. And you're going to make a left or right. It doesn't matter, that big tree. And I don't want to see the tree gone, but I want somebody to look at to make it somewhat safer for pulling out there. Because be in front of the Barclays? In the building they owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not, not in front of no, the... No, no, the, the house. Yes, yes. yes. The, the four apartments yes. in it. Those trees are gone. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the big tree. Yeah, it's going. Is it going now? Take a look at it. Yeah. Oh, and again, I, I, it's either. still there. And it's, it's just, just that I see too many people inching out, inching out, and all of a sudden there's a car coming sure, down they can't see. If there's a side of structure, that's coming out. Uh, and again, just, okay, now it's out there, and yeah. I'm happy then. The depend on site distance for me has got to be followed to the T. Absolutely. Okay. If it's in the way, it comes out. All right, thank you. Yep. The Chestnut Street barn, is, is that up to get painted? That contract uh, go out? There's been conversation about that. I know we budgeted it. Do you think it'll happen this year, Ed? I think it will. I did ask about the roof, though, too. The roof we didn't put in the budget. No, and it should get an option, Grant, if it's It, sh it should have been, because when you look at that roof, it's solid rust. Right. So Maybe we can get it as an option. And if it's maybe when you go out for the bid. Because you know, we're, it's going to be more expensive to mobilize a contractor out there exa twice. Exactly. Maybe maybe we have money laying around. We can deal with it because the roof's solid rust there, and or we don't maybe deal. It's uh, from the rec commission. Yeah. yeah. So if we don't deal with it now, it just gets worse. Uh, and one last thing I have is the fire chief here now. Uh, at the cement and firehouse, are we checking that occasionally to make sure the inventory's intact there? I know the fire chief had done on, done an interview. An interview. Inventory. An inventory of everything that's there and gave it to us about two or three months ago. Right. Are, are we sure that everything is secure? In other words, there's so many checking this once in a while because it, there, there seemed to be a time a few months ago there were numerous keys, keys floating around for that building. We have our own locks on the building. I think that's what yes. I'm trying to get to. Yes, we do. So we have our own locks where this equipment they, is stored. We do, but we have one lock or one key that's in a safe. Problem and need to get somebody in there to help. Then they go and get that key. Now that's the two people who can. But are we checking to make sure our stuff's intact in there, and the mice? I don't know. If subsequent to Dave's inventory, they've done anything. But I know Mark goes around and checks a lot of things. And have we put rodent control in the building there that, that the mice and rats don't happen to get in and chew some of this expensive gear up? You know, like we do our other buildings. We have rodent control. Are we, do, are we taking care of that in that building? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that in all of our buildings that we have, you'll see the little... Black. Yeah, so maybe we should put that on the list too with all that equipment because there was a lot of money of equipment in there. And if, if they get in and start chewing around on that stuff, then we have nothing. Okay. So it's a, just a, something I don't want to make sure it's overlooked. That's all I have. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Uh, I have one thing, but 
I'll let it go. Sure. Yeah. Come on. Come on. It, okay, it's on MacArthur Road. Oh. I'm a happy guy that they're doing something. However, where they're milling at right now, I don't see where the big need is. Where it's needed is from Grape Street down to Allentown. Up here, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out my tax dollars going to a road that really, to me, was not that bad. And, I just get to go on a lot of roads, but uh, and I would agree with you because the southern portion is that super paved. It's got the quartz crystals facing up, and so when it gets wet, mm -hmm. there's all these light and yep. fender benders. And, and, and again, I know we can't do anything about it. It's yeah, just this yeah. major inconvenience. We've had that and it was brought up they earlier. They that bridge and put it up three feet. But, uh, That's it, Mr. Warren. Okay, three quick. I'll make them really quick. Um, one, uh, PennDOT's projects, this is for the public knowledge, they've been doing what's called design build, where they let a contract where the contract requires somebody to design the project, and then the plan's already in place, and they go and build it. So I think when the mayor was presenting at the uh, American Legion in Fullerton, um, he would kept saying, we don't have plans. projects where they let the contract out for the contractor to make the plans and then when the plans are approved then they go into the build phase. It was a little confusing to me the first time I heard it. Uh, the other thing, the pavilion project sounds like we're ready to go. We're waiting for the contractor to free up and we hear it's there and if we hit any bumps along the way we have a full court press where everything Last thing is, um, this goes back to when Tony Toko applied for a grant to the uh, Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. It was a mini grant, and ground we landed twenty two hundred bucks for that. And I guess right now Brandon is going to have to look at. How does that fit in with the project now that Riverside Drive and that Wood Street Playground are accelerating? So, started that project several months ago, and the chamber announced it. Okay, all I have was Memorial Day was a beautiful day. Thank you for coming out if you did. And I would be remiss to not thank Mrs. Rackus and her family for the wonderful flowers that they plant at the memorial every year. I also want to thank Tom Bropes, Dennis Lobb, and many others over at Public Works for all the hard work they did on the memorial. And I want to uh, thank Brandon from Recreation for his hard work setting up the festivities that day. Also, I just want to let everyone know that the time capsule stone was installed in the front of the new building, and it looks wonderful. And the dedication plaque was also installed in the lobby area walking into the administration side, and it looks wonderful. Frank, I just had one question. Taylor Villa's fence along their retention, detention ponds, whatever you want to call them. They're finishing up, and we have that. It's been, that's been ordered. Okay. So, yep. so we should see them soon. Yeah, they have to um, give the, the spec for the openings in the fence, the, the, the holes, if you will, um, so we get that right because there's a regulation on that. So that's all been underway. So you know what type of fence? This split rail with okay. mesh. You know, I've seen that used, and they put sometimes they put the fencing. The fencing has to be on the outside. Yeah. Okay. So in case you get that stuck looks, inside, you can climb out. That'll fit better with the homestead. Yeah, I think it will fit a lot better. So. Thanks, Mark. Yep. That's all I have. Mayor's report. A um, couple of things. Uh, there was conversation a number of times today about the uh, Wood Street recreation area. Um, the reason that the, uh, the basketball courts were taken down uh, was because that I should be doing this. Yeah, the, uh, what wound up happening was because we had uh, planned to have Wood Street um, go to 
the uh, transportation program uh, was because uh, we were within a year or two of having to deal with that. We already submitted information to uh, to NDOT to guarantee that we were going to get some money back uh, in a, a greater uh, amount than uh, they had. So uh, Tony made a decision to take down the boards. Uh, we were having a lot of uh, uh, problems down there. Um, and uh, it, let's move along and uh, we're going to get rid of this stuff. As it turned out, that year, later in the year, um, we lost a lot of money uh, to the tip and I think it was like $85 million. Um, that's what really created the problem for us. Uh, so it sat there for a two years now, I think, uh, decided it's not changing. We're going to put something down there. Uh, we started with the uh, uh, pickleball. pickleball, yeah. And uh, now we're, because of that $2,200, uh, we're going to wind up putting up the backboards again, uh, do a, an, uh, a, a do it in a way where we can transfer it to another playground when necessary. I don't know exactly when, uh, and I don't, Phil, you may have heard something about this, or, or Lee, when we're going to see 22 go at this. Don't see it anywhere. So, Lee, you hearing anything? Yeah, they still haven't finalized everything. Right. Okay. So that's, that's the first thing. We, we want to make sure that we have adequate um, opportunities for our, our uh, young people. Wood Street is going to be around for a while yet, so we're going to make it better. Sure. The other thing, too, that got it back that delayed it was Riverside Drive. And after we lost the Route 22 widening money, and so the design of the real. Yeah, it did. You know, it's how that ramp is coming through and how Wood Street's going to line up is still on the. But the other, the other thing relevant to 22 is it was pulled back from the 22 project and it became a standalone project. Uh, and we're going to see that in well before we're going to see 22. So that is uh, something I've heard uh, could begin as soon as a year, year and a half, uh, and make the street bridge. I think we need a uh, we need a getting a, another environment to get, uh, get people out of the way and Avenue and, and uh, MacArthur Road. So um, just a couple other things. Um, the uh, first thing I have here is Cornerstone Report. This is, uh, I'll just read this first piece. As reported at our most recent police pension meeting, the first quarter investment report showed a gain in the fund's investment portfolio of $1.87 million in the first quarter. And uh, we can talk about the numbers. If uh, you have any other questions, give me a call. Um, EAC is just doing incredible work. Uh, since the beginning of the year, we've done uh, three or four litter cleanups, and uh, we're now a uh, bird town um, I have a little picture in here with everybody that came down to do the work uh, at uh, Mickley Avenue, and we had a bunch of a mixture of very young people and very old people. Um, 
Senior Center is going well. Uh, again, there are opportunities for you if you are a professional uh, bingo player. You go down there and you can kill it. Um, we were at the EAC uh, with at the cleanup was led by the Whitehall Fire Police. Uh, we had them working with the uh, with the EAC at the same time. The Rotary was cleaning up, and we were planting flowers along the IRT. Um, and the TASA grant is moving along well, and we'll see a meeting soon, Phil. I think. Uh, so I, that's about all. Thank, Thank you. you. Treasurer's report. Uh, for the Treasurer's disbursement account. We paid out business privilege tax to the school district and the township twice this month. We're doing well, very well with the collections. We paid out the township real estate and garbage to the township. We sent the report to the school district and the township. Per capita is going to start July 1st along with the school district real estate will start July 1st. So we'll be really busy starting July 1st and that's all I have. Okay. With that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Do I have a second? second. Being adjourned. Everyone have a great night. Thank you. What's the official time? I have 9.19. Okay. I, I got to go. Okay. No, is this slow? Oh, no, this is. You wind it up every night? No, no, this is with the atomic energy, energy people. Atomic energy. <laughs> Last time I heard atomic, it was like back in the 70s.